All right, now we'll move on to our panel. So please welcome our panelists. Welcome back, Avi Friedman, who some of you may know. Um, <clears throat> Phil Rosenthal uh, from Beluga CDN. Um, and Herman Kapoor from Staples. <clears throat> and last but not least, Dayton Turner from Boxster. All right, so the panel today is all about network monitoring. We just heard about uh, one really interesting tool um, from Kentech, which is all about flow data. Um, so let's just start real quick with a brief introduction from everyone uh, in terms of uh, really kind of what they're doing, um, if anything, to expose network data to external customers. So let's start not with you know, monitoring your network for your own reasons, for you know, tracking your own availability, your own performance, but I'm curious to start with, are you guys using, doing anything to uh, expose network details to customers? Because that initially sounds like kind of a crazy idea, but we're seeing a theme where service providers want to be more and more transparent. So I'll start with our three service providers. Uh, Phil, uh, Beluga CDN, are you guys uh, exposing external um, network details to your customers? And you know, is that a scary proposition? as a CDN? So uh, we've been working on, on a project now for, uh, for basically two years where uh, we wanted to expose uh, network data to our customers as far as like, you know, what is the performance of uh, the CDN to, uh, to the customers in a way that, you know, rather than then just taking our word for, yes, the performance is good, yes, the availability is good, that they can actually monitor it in real time and we've, developed an API that delivers this information, you know, basically all, you know, all metrics, throughput, status codes, errors, uh, uh, things like that. We've had a number of customers ask us if we offer that feature, and, you know, we, we tell them yes, and we give them a link to the documentation to the API, and I think it ticks a box for them on, you know, their procurement, but very few actually ended up using it, which was not what our intention was. So. We've actually been working on an app for uh, for Grafana, which is uh, in approval, should be uh, uh, public in, in a couple of days probably. But uh, basically, uh, you know, the intention is that our customers will be able to, on the same dashboard, have their internal uh, monitoring data, looking at what you know, their origin web servers are doing, as well as what's actually going on on the CDN, so they can figure out, you know, is there a problem in you know, say in Eastern Europe or, or something like that, and monitor it, you know, within a, you know, essentially a real-time manner. That's interesting. So you're obviously in a slightly different situation than our uh, speaker, Avi, who's allowing customers to monitor their own networks. You're now showing your customers the status of your network. Isn't that uh, potentially kind of scary when you're having an outage or a slowdown? You're kind of uh, you know, showing your customers exactly what's going on in real time, and you don't have any chance to spin that or PR that or damage control that, right? I mean. How does that work out? It, it's actually it's a really good point, and, and I think actually you know what what Avi's done is actually a it's a really nice complement to, to what we're doing. Like you know what what Avi has will help in them understanding what's happening on their network, and what, you know what uh, what we're doing allows them to understand what you know what the continuation of their network is doing, the the CDN. And you know if you look at what we expect today in availability, reliability, you know if you go back five years ago, it wasn't that uncommon that you'd have even really popular, like say bank websites or Twitter or whatever, they might be down for an hour or a couple of hours if you were like, well, whatever, you know, it's fine, it was usually available. But today, the idea of like, you know, your bank website going down for like a minute, um, everybody knows about that now. And when we start shrinking down the, the acceptable outage windows, you know, so us as a service provider, we monitor, uh, you know, everything, but there, you know, with us providing service to many, many customers, there, there are limits to how much time we can spend looking at, at everything. You know, if uh, someone's having a lot of 404 errors, maybe normal for them, maybe not normal for someone else. If our customers can see that data in real time, they might know about a problem before we do, but if they find it in, you know, in five minutes rather than us finding it in a half an hour, we're happy that the customer can just have better uptime and give us a quick time to fix it. 
That makes sense. So it sounds like you th you're actually providing more value to your customer by being transparent. Now, Hermant, uh, to you. Um, you know, obviously, unlike our other three panelists, you're not a service provider. You're an extremely large enterprise and probably running a very complicated and global network. I imagine you, you're not really interested in exposing the status of that network to your either customers or partners. Would I be correct in that, or am I wrong? We have a fairly large enterprise, like I think 90,000 employees worldwide. Last, last we counted, and. What happens is uh, within our ecosystem, there's a critical need to expose what is happening at any given point in time because an outage spans across multiple verticals, and then especially when it's a network related outage. So I think we are uh, obviously interested. So as a, we are interested in two uh, basic applications of this: one, the internal consumption of the data, and second, uh, essentially motivating and making a compelling argument for our CDN providers to be able to hook their data into us so that we can actually start looking at what they are doing. Because we do use CDN providers like yourself, and essentially that's where I think the value of this tool is. Gotcha, so it's, it's to help your internal teams really understand what's going on without it being a bottleneck for your, right, that's interesting. And to our, uh, to our uh, last service provider that we haven't yet touched on, uh, Dayton, you run a voice over, P, uh, sorry, vo voice over IP uh, carrier in Canada. And obviously VoIP is probably one of the most uh, network sensitive uh, you know, applications out there. Um, you know, I'm curious, uh, are you using, you know, what, what does your tool set you look like to keep track of your network? Because it's probably, like I said, I mean, you're probably on top of it more so than uh, almost any other user, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, voice over IP, unlike a lot of you know web applications over HTTP, um, is sensitive down to milliseconds. Um, when you have a two-second delay in getting, you know, voice that's split up into twenty millisecond chunks to the uh, the other side, um, if you were to experience a two-second delay in loading an image uh, in a web request, you probably wouldn't notice unless it was consistently happening. Uh, in voice, that's going to sound like you know um, words missing or or you know giant fragments of sentences missing. So it's it's extremely important to get uh, not only real time information but um, uh, data from various points. Uh, so um, similar to uh, the 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 CDN side, um, we do actually expose this data. So we we have a, a geographically distributed voice over IP platform. Um, we're, a, we're a software company in one light and a service provider in another light. So we, we build the software, we host our own data center, we run our own network, um, and we do service delivery uh, around the globe and point people to the closest pop using some tech like Anycast and, and some, um, some application layer stuff. Um, so we've got, we've got uh, collectors inside of our own software that collect data about, you know, how many devices have you got online? Uh, how many calls have you got going? What is the status of, our, of, of each of our pops? Which ones are you on? Um, we've got an app, also in Grafana.net, that you guys helped us make. Because um, we were originally storing all this data in our own Grafana instance. And had a bit of a hard time exposing that data without allowing people to accidentally see other people's data. Um, so building an app really allowed us to do that. We've also got um, some, some network level stuff that looks at how many packets are sent, how many packets are received. Um, luckily, in the you know, SIP and, and RTP protocols, we've got um, metrics that get collected by both the phone that you're on and the server that your phone is talking to and the carrier. And uh, we, can, we can infer data from, uh, from various points to figure out whether or not there was loss, whether or not there was jitter, um, and then actually build a nice map of like the caller side and the callee side and expose that, and that's stuff that we're, uh, we've currently got the data on. It's not in Grafana yet, and we're moving towards that, so it's all one big single pane um, where you can, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a really great piece of transparency for us to be able to not only give um, you know, our clients or our resellers who are white labeling us a view into their own data or their customers' data in terms of activity and usage, but also um, to be able to do their own troubleshooting and go, oh, this customer called and said that they had a bad call. I can see that it's on their side, not the server side, because those graphs are unique. Um, and then they can infer action from that so that if they do have to contact us or their client, they're already armed with the data they need um, to, to, to act on it rather than having to do the back and forth, like, tell me what happened. Who, who, who. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. So it helps you get to the bottom of the, the problem a lot faster. Absolutely. Right? Yeah.
Yeah. So my next question it will be directed, I guess, to both Avi, who services a lot of enterprises, as well as Hermont, who obviously represents an enterprise. When it comes to network visibility, um, and I guess I'll ask Hermont first, what is the main issue that you're, that's driving your network visibility tools today? Is it performance? Is it security? Is it uh, capacity? Is it all of the above? Is there, a, is, there a, you know, is there one or two really driving forces that are really wanting you to call, yeah. peel back the covers with your network? So I think for us, the, so we are a very large e-commerce shop. And for us, the critical challenge is that uh, we have four portfolios and across all those portfolios, the ecosystem of services that support them for our customer transactions is fairly large. The footprint is pretty wide. So to be able to establish a strong trace of activities all the way from the CDN down to the data and establish a map of what's happening in a given transaction is very critical to troubleshoot and triage issues and incidents for us. So for network appliances and network devices that we have in the ecosystem, that's also very, very pro prominent in order to be able to set up a trace of what's actually happening and map an event all the way down to the data so that we can actually troubleshoot a given problem or, or, or an outage. So it's about sort of end-to-end -end visibility of particular, uh, particular even transactions or, or incidents. That's, that's what's driving the most, most of the reasoning for us to go after this. That's interesting. So Avi, you and I have talked a lot about flow over the last uh, year or two as you guys, as Kentech has, uh, has ramped up. I mean, you know, fl NetFlow data and, and the amount of insight you can get from NetFlow data and solutions like um, Kentech is pretty amazing. When it comes to end-to-end -end visibility, is that the right way to do it? Or is that the only way to do it? Maybe you're the biased uh, person in the room to ask. But um, what is it about NetFlow um, you know, when it, that, and the data you can get from Flow Analytics that is supposedly so much better um, in terms of visibility than what you can get from other kinds of instrumentation? Well, we take a broad view of the definition of NetFlow. So as we were talking about earlier, Nginx logs with TCP info data that then has latency plus where the bytes and packets went, that then that's NetFlow but without TCP flags, so maybe it's not as good for DDoS. You get S-Flow from a router, okay, that doesn't have connection information. We have an agent that goes on a server, and then that can do everything. So I think there's flow that's more security. In fact, bro and snort and logs like that can effectively be flow. There's bro that, there's, there's flow that has none of that augmented data, which doesn't help you with your problems. Mm -hmm. And then what we see a lot of our customers want to do is flow, but more with the performance data. Even DDoS tends to be more of an availability, and availability is the zero and one, and performance is the grayscale, right? Because DDoS is like, I shove your head in the toilet, and that might help you to someone to pick your pocket, but it's not actually a security thing, it's really just an availability thing. What we've seen is interesting, though, is the industry. I think the industry of metrics, logs, APM, we've all sucked at explaining how we get to the, the nirvana of, of seeing the whole transaction trace, real, real visibility, okay. but um, because a lot of the vendors that have traditionally done flow analytics but with the performance are $300,000 boxes, most of our customers, uh, you know, like Yelp and Pandora and Spotify, they would never buy such a thing. So show it, educating people that you can actually get data, view it as traffic analytics, and, and, and add it to your application metrics and your server metrics, which again, we're not building, um, to get at this kind of common enterprise problem, which is revenue. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, revenue, customer experience, brand, right? If Uber you can't get your Uber, you're good to live. Yep. Um, I think there's emerging awareness about that. I think we all have some education to do. So yeah, standard S-Flow alone, you know, does some interesting things, but it's really a broader view of get the data from everywhere and start with traffic, but then bring in the rest of your infrastructure. <coughs> cool. Um, so, I mean, w you know, when it comes to this quest for end-to-end -end visibility, Hermont, that uh, you're, uh, you've established as one of your main priority, what's your biggest impediment? Is it the tooling out there? Is it uh, education? Is it uh, internal issues? All of the above? I mean, you know, w why is this still a problem? I mean, is it... Uh, so you might find it surprising, simple as it may sound, the, the very basic fundamental missing building block in a given traction path is a correlation ID that essentially travels all the way down to the data when the order is processed and fulfills some incident actually goes and drops the ship. It's, it has taken a mammoth effort, a lot of effort, in actually getting all of the functional pieces aligned to connect dots together using that one single correlation ID. And, for ex and in our case, what we are ex expecting to achieve, we have, in, along the entire 
chain of events. We have established it in bits and pieces, but we are still stitching them up. We are still working with the teams, the dev teams, as well as the infrastructure teams, the operations <coughs> teams, the cloud team, to actually modify and modulate their setup and make the orchestration available to actually enable that piece. And that piece is essentially, I think, is the biggest impediment because essentially every subsystem has data of its own kind, but they don't talk to each other in a common language that helps them stitch together. And that's where I think we, 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 we are focusing on. Huh, that's interesting. Do you think you'll ever see a single uh, transaction ID? I mean, that seems like something you're, you're going to have to figure out or create. It's like the... It's the dream and the vision. So right. I'm hopeful that we will see it. Yes. <laughs> help from people like yourself. All right. There's pivoted tracing companies that are working on helping, but then how do you do DNS? Right. How do yeah. you do CDN? Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Because everything is a, a, a subsystem of its own in, in the entire ecosystem of things. Right. If you go from all the way your CDN wire down to the order management system, the story the changes the changes yeah. the, the, the color 180 degree, yeah. and, and it's very hard to pinpoint what's happening for a, for an end user and a customer. You'd be surprised if you, if you look at the something that's as simple as the feedback channel, the opinion that where customers go and poll in their reviews and talk about what hap what's happening to their experience. The feedback is coming in consistently around various pages that what are they seeing, but to be able to troubleshoot it all the way down it takes a lot of work. And effort. Sure. And uh, thank uh, Phil, Dayton, Avi, and Hermont uh, for a great panel.